Hello, it's Monday. It is time for a weigh-in and a check-in and see what's been going on. So weigh-in day, we'll start with that. At 2.7 pounds down for the week, not too shabby. That means I am at 33 and a half pounds for the entire endeavor which I'm pretty happy with. That's good. Um, I'll admit I have not been to the gym since last Monday. I woke up Tuesday with a really bad sore throat, which then turned into a head cold. I still have some pretty gross sinuses, but I'm mostly over it. Um, but I just had so much going on that I was going to cut myself some slack on that. Um, and I did still lose weight, so that's okay. I did watch my nutrition uh, pretty closely, my portion sizes. I'm still really working on that sugar. It is not easy. Um, chocolate. When did I get to be such a hound for chocolate? But that's... Probably one of my biggest temptations right now is chocolate. Uh, I did read today looking for options on cutting down cravings for chocolate, specifically chocolate, and apparently magnesium. If you're low in magnesium, it will, some in some people, cause your body to crave chocolate because of there's something in chocolate that gives a reaction in your body that also magnesium does. So I do have magnesium and I'm going to start taking it. Um, additional benefits of magnesium are that if you are not a good sleeper or if you have anxiety, magnesium can reduce anxiety and help you sleep. So chelated magnesium specifically. Um, and I've had really good luck with that in the past, which is why I have magnesium on hand. Um, so let's see. Yeah, no gym for a week. I have some notes here so that I didn't forget to tell you about anything that's been, since it's been a whole week. Um, last week, I have to admit, I had, I was in a pretty low place most of the week. Stayed there. It was a tough week. Um, yeah, there's just no way to, no other way to put it. I was really depressed. Um, I did finally get a therapist, and I saw him on Thursday. My new therapist. It is local. I can get to his office in 15 minutes from my apartment, half an hour from my work. No big deal. Um, so he was a lot of work to get, but I think I like him. I'm going to see him again on this Thursday. And, um, he's intense. Like, he's intense. Um, as far as, like, his expectation. So instead of the usual, you go to a therapist and they say, so, what brings you in? He started it with... So, what are you hoping to accomplish with these sessions? So, he's holding me accountable, and he continued to do so throughout this, the session. In our getting, his questions were very pointed, and his responses towards the end of the session were spot on, and not always what I wanted to hear about myself. So, he's going to challenge me. <laughs> So the challenges that he gave me first session, like right out of the box, um, he asked me if I had always been a victim. And that was horrible to hear because I have always prided myself in not being a victim. But in this process through my sister's passing, I think I just have that because 
I didn't feel like I had any control. And so I let go of all of it. And that, but that was shocking to hear that I have never considered myself a victim. I grew up with a house full of victims and that is absolutely what I cannot become. And he asked me if I was comfortable with the idea that I might become a martyr, just like my grandma. <sighs> Same thing. My grandma loved her. And I used to say, if I grew up to be just like my grandma, it wouldn't be such a bad thing. Except she was a martyr. She wore it on her sleeve as far as all the sacrifices that she had to make for others. And we all knew how much she gave up for us entirely too much of the time. I mean, we make choices when we make sacrifices for others. We're not supposed to make them pay for them, <laughs> at least in my opinion. And so um, the martyr thing drives me nuts when I see it in other people. And he asked me, especially around my sister's passing, if I was comfortable being a martyr for her. No. <laughs> and then the other thing that he asked that I hadn't ever had anybody ask directly was um, after asking, after a long conversation and other questions, he asked me if I might consider if I have an eating disorder. Well, maybe I hadn't specifically looked at it or discussed it in that way with anyone before but yeah I mean really the only reason I don't haven't talked about it in that way with anyone is because my weight my body my eating habits whatever were always considered to be my dirty secrets and growing up I wasn't these are not topics for public discussion this is what you hide and um so yeah so then his challenge to me was to see if i could find some support groups because through all of the things that i've gone through in my life i have not had um much of a support system. I mean, I have friends here and there that have helped me at different stages of my life, but I've never had a consistent, solid, you know, get, get through everything support system. I've had to figure it out on my own for the most part. And, um, and so, especially in the hardest things in life, I tend to go inward and I don't do a support system. I don't allow for it. I don't look for it. They're, was never one available and I don't really know how to operate in a really hard situation with asking for or allowing help. And so his feedback was, well, you don't do it when things are hard. You do it when things are fine and you build that support system so that when things are hard, it's already there. <laughs> so anyway, but now that things are, I've, you know, I've gotten to a point where things are quieter in my life but I have things I want to work on, my grief, and I'm still working on my weight and my health, he suggested that I look for some group support. So his suggestions were Overeaters Anonymous to consider thinking about the eating disorder. I didn't end up going to an, eat, to an Overeaters Anonymous group meeting. Um, because I don't think my issue is my, as, as much around overeating as in disordered eating. So it's just a bit more of an elaborate thing than I just eat too much. And um, plus that program is very, uh, it's based on 12 steps, it's very God-based. And I'm not particularly in line with letting go and letting God. I want to, I like having some personal accountability and being able to celebrate my own strength if I have a win. And by letting God have it, I feel like I'm letting go of some of my own accountability. And so 
So I did go to a Food Addicts Anonymous meeting on Saturday. And it was quite something to sit in a room full of very nice people and listen to them talk about their thoughts around food and eating and all the things that I was told that you should never say out loud. It was very emotional to hear that people talk about stuff that I think in my head, but I've always considered to be the things that make me a freak. And <laughs> these people, there was no shame. There's all acceptance and support. So that was very interesting and I will go again. They were a very welcoming group of people, very supportive. And so I'll probably look into that again. There's a meeting again on Thursday. This particular meeting is every Saturday morning, and that might work out to actually be a pretty good time and location for me. But there is a meeting on Thursday at that same location, so I'm going to go to that and see what I think of it this week. Tonight, the other group that I'm checking out is a grief support group at a local church. Don't know how I feel about it. I'm a little nervous. It's a couple hours from now, but I am going to go. Um, I really feel like I'm not grieving in a normal way because I have so much animosity and old resentments and all of that around my sister. But, you know, not just grieving the loss of her, but I'm sure that everybody's grief is individual. And so I'm going to go with an open mind and see what I think of it. Um, so that's tonight. What else did I do this week? Oh yeah, so my women's, the Seroptimus Club that I joined. They've had a busy week. They had a fundraiser on Saturday evening. Um, and that was actually a bit of a win. I did have a cocktail because they were serving cocktails, but um, I did keep my portion size, it was a food thing. So that we, it was a lasagna feed at a yacht club where we did a raffle of prizes and then did a donation based dinner that the members of the yacht club could purchase. And so we made a bunch of different types of lasagna. There was vegetarian lasagna, gluten-free lasagna, and regular lasagna along with salads <clears throat> and a bunch of desserts, a bunch. I managed to avoid all the desserts. I had a reasonable piece of gluten-free lasagna. It was delicious and a bit of salad. And that was it. None of the bread, none of the garlic bread. I kept it good and I felt my stomach felt fine with the gluten-free lasagna. So, so yeah, so I did pretty good. And I was on my feet all night and I was okay. My back was all right. And so getting stronger in spite of not going to the gym. All of these appointments and groups and things like that mean that I am on public transportation all the time. And um, so with that, I think I'm getting a lot more accustomed to just being up and moving on my feet. Um, this week, I literally have something every night of the week. I have grief class tonight. I have another women's group, which is one that I met with a couple months ago, the first one. They did not meet in the meantime. They canceled their, their August meeting. But we have a meeting tomorrow night that is the topic is writing and publishing a book. And I'm very interested in that. Uh, Wednesday, I have, I've started up on the second session, uh, second level of meditation classes. So Wednesday, I have meditation class. And then Thursday, I have a therapy appointment. And then the Food Addicts Anonymous meeting. Nothing on Friday. Like, hopefully, hopefully that'll be date night or something. But so super, super busy. Um... But the process of getting busy like this on my own for my own benefit, I have not been feeling depressed. That statement about me being a victim, that was a slap in the face. He doesn't know it. He'll hear about it this week. <laughs> but it really was. Like, am I really a victim of this? 
this is what's going to take me down. Oh. And so, um, so yeah, it was definitely time to take back some of my own power. And I am feeling better. Not to say that I'm perfect all the time. I still have lots of rotten thoughts and it's not easy. But making my mind up to help myself. That's what needed to happen. And so that it was doable at all um, is important. Uh, the idea with a lot of these social groups is um, my intention when I began and was reinforced by my therapist is that I need to make some friends. And um, I don't think I've given my phone number out to so many women in such a short period of time in my whole life. So I have lots of new phone numbers on my phone between this uh, Soroptimus Club and the Food Addicts Anonymous meeting. Um, and I don't feel nearly as alone as I did last week. I have people that are interested in how my day is going and that hasn't happened in a while. And it just feels good to sh that I'm maybe going to be part of the world a bit more than I was. I feel like I'm part of the world a little more. So it's been a good week and I think that's all I've got. Um, if you have any questions about any of these groups or clubs that I'm doing, go ahead and put them in the comments and I will, I will look and answer. Um, and that's it. I'll see you guys next week.